But let's add this to it as well on the four Gospels. Because it's very important for us to understand the four Gospels and the context of the four Gospels from an Ethiopic or a black perspective. In other words, from, from our own roots. It says everyone will sit under their own vine and fig tree. You know what I'm saying? And this is one of the prophetic words of the new millennium. So we too, as um, Ethiopic Hebrew or Hebraic Christian people, Judeo-Christians, Ethiopian Hebrews, as elect Arastafari, you understand, as redeemed people of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, need to also understand and rather overstand the Gospels or the Wengel, the good news, in its proper context. And since this is the season of the new year and the September 11th season more generally, it would behoove us to get into a better understanding of the relation of the four Gospels one to another. Now, His Imperial Majesty has said something on this particular point. And let's get this, give me a moment, let me get this book right here. Now, this is a book, um, I, I think a couple of y'all have been able to order it, and hopefully more will be able to order it, and, and we're trying to get it to the point where we can have the prices even more more um, available, you understand, um, for those who who might not be able to afford it, you understand. However, this is why we bring these teachings forward, you understand, which we think go into much more of the detail, but now much of the detail is 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 um, needed to be put in print form. This is one thing we've mentioned elsewhere that we would hope that a lot of the other teachers and lecturers out there that if they can get their works transcribed, and if we the people can also take it upon ourselves to transcribe many of these these uh, audio messages or or video messages or transcribe many of the documentaries and many of the lectures. You understand? For the lecturers to maybe add more information to it, but to have it in as many different sort of media so that it can be hopefully preserved, both for this generation and for the generation to come. Now, this particular book right here, Rastafari Preliminary Notes on the Haile Selassie Bible, you understand? Published by yours truly. Your, bro your brother by faith, in a Rasialinos Teferi. In this particular book, we added to it His Majesty's uh, what's known as his Lutheran, his Lutheran um, interview. And on page 146 of this particular book right here, His Majesty is asked the question, and we find that this particular interview, as well as this uh, particular um, speech right here, where His Imperial Majesty speaks on religion, you understand, are very are crucial and foundational. We find that these things are foundational um, documents. So for Rastafari or anyone who's interested in the true um, message of Rastafari or what, what is the gospel, when we say the gospel of the King of Kings and His Christ, when we say the good news of his imperial majesty, what do we mean by that good news? What is the articulation, you understand, from the root and the truth? It's these sort of speeches, books like this that we've just published, and the particular um, Lutheran interview, which his imperial majesty conducted um, with uh, the... Dr. Oswald Hoffman, roughly around December, it was December 25th, 1968. You understand? The 1968 Christmas Day interview of His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I, as interviewed by Dr. Oswald Hoffman. Now, on page 146 of our new book, it says, um, Dr. Hoffman asks his, asks his Imperial Majesty, it is a magnificent answer, he says to him, and I am deeply grateful for it. To turn to another subject, your Imperial Majesty, are there any passages of the Bible that have become especially meaningful to you? 
and his imperial majesty Haile Selassie I, answered, I have the highest respect for the Bible as a whole. We also recognize the rightful name the Bible bears. The rightful name that we have discovered by prophecy is the Metzahafic Caduce. And the Metzahafic Caduce, speaking of his imperial majesty's Bible, right here, speaking of the Metzahaf Caduce, and you see those, that says Metzahaf Caduce on the back part, with his seal of seven seals, and the one who sits on the throne connected with the line of the tribe of Judah, which is none other than Kadamawi Haile Selassie. He says, we also recognize the rightful name the Bible bears. We find that in all the periods of the Old Testament, in the times of patriarchs, kings, and prophets, great miracles were done. On the other hand, the time in which our Lord himself gave the command to go to all the world and to preach is also of highest value. Then Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the four Gospels in which the sayings of our Lord, Gietachin Adonenu, are recorded, are pillars. He says they are pillars for all men on the earth. Therefore, the Bible should not be cut into portions. The Bible, in other words, the Bible should not be dismembered as so many have done. Well, we reject this part, or we don't like that book, or, or like what they do with Paul and um, Hawaria Paulos and Hawaria uh, uh, Yaiko or James. They basically, the whole works versus grace kind of thing, and some say, I don't really like James because he's talking about the law, and he don't mention Jesus, and I like Paul because Paul says, it's all about grace, no law. They are misunderstanding it. So his majesty reminds us that the Bible should not be cut into, into portions or dismembered one from, from another, as though they have no relation. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't study different books in the context that they are, but in order to understand one book, we have to go to other books and other resources because it's, it's one entirety, it's one full message. Now, when his imperial majesty mentions Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and he mentions right here the four Gospels, it's very important that we pay attention to what his imperial majesty is saying by mentioning that the, that, that the four Gospels in which the sayings of our Lord, Adonai Getachin, are recorded, are pillars for all men on the earth. Now, what happens if you remove pillars? What happens if you remove pillars? Something's going to fall down. So if you have pillars upholding a building or a temple or whatever other kind of structure, and you remove pillars, in fact, in the 9-11 uh, situation, remember the 9-11 situation? I mean, how can you forget? They, they won't allow anybody to forget about 9-11. Something was mentioned in this particular book that we had touched on um, previously and before. In this particular article right here, 911 plus 10, right? 911 plus 10. And we're going to reveal what 911 plus 10 actually means. And it's very interesting, 911 plus 10, because there's an emphasis right now, there's an emphasis to make sure that this particular memorial and this particular 10th anniversary of 911 goes according to plan. But the question is, whose plan? So we see these things and we don't recognize that a, a certain set of people are planning these things and it is a, a coordinated psychological attack against humanity because the 9-11 and this particular September 11th and September 12th and this time in 2011 as we go into 2012, especially this particular, um, um, what would this be called? This would be called an a, a, a equinox. We're going into a time of a of of an equinox, I believe it's so, not the solstice, you understand, but we're going into a period of time of the equinox. What is this? What is this all about? It's very important for us to understand. It's a particular gate. This is what we tried to explain elsewhere 
in our presentation, let's get this right here, where we tried to explain with these four, one, two, three, four, these four, these four points, we show the octagon here and we showed another example of it. These particular four times, what we've been trying to explain with the so-called four living creatures, the four beasts, or the kiru, the cherubim, and how that's mentioned in his Ezekiel, or his kia, how it's also mentioned in Johannes Arai. You know, what is the connection with this particular time? The fact is that if you don't calculate time correctly, on this September 11, 2011, you will think it's the Ethiopian New Year, but actually the Addis Ahmed is this year is the 12th, and there's significant reasons that's all based on God's celestial, his celestial timekeeping from Genesis 1 and 14. It points out that the sun, the moon, and the stars are for signs and seasons and days and years. Now, his majesty, his imperial majesty, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Moa Andesa Zaima Negeta Yehuda, the Kedamawi Haila Sulase, Siyuma Egeziabi Her Negus Neges Ze Etopia, he basically reminds us in the Lutheran interview that these four gospels, these four, you know, saying which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, one, two, three, four which also links with the Ezekiel 1 and 10 and Revelation 4, 6 to 8, the living creatures, the particular two solstices and the two equinoxes. They said that last year, I think it was 2010 um, or 2009, 2010, there were two, it seems as though there were a doubling, there was a doubling of the solstices and equinoxes. In other words, certain things aligned in heaven twice. And this shows now that there's a movement going on in heaven. In fact, one of the things that's true about the 2012 is that there will be an alignment, that the earth is realigning, the earth and heaven is realigning. Because before this time, the earth has been on a 23-degree axis. And this also now is affecting the weather patterns. This also is having an influence on the floods and the fires. And, and the different other natural so-called disturbances. It's, it's not to be taken personally so much, though a lot of personal people are being affected, hurt, injured, some even killed by a lot of these, not being prepared or not taking, not, not being prepared or forewarned about what a significant time in creation we're entering into. Now, September 11th, and the September 11, 12 gate is a certain celestial gateway. But it also connects with Rosh Hashanah. Do you know what Rosh Hashanah is? Well, Rosh Hashanah is the Hebraic New Year. You understand? Rosh Hashanah, what's often called Rosh Hashanah. Now, what is significant about Rosh Hashanah, and we need to... Um, we need to uh, make a, 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 a point about this, is that Rosh Hashanah, let me get this right here, Rosh Hashanah this year, this year for our brothers and sisters and the students, Rosh Hashanah this year is September because it's according to Luna. When we talk about the Ethiopian New Year and the Ethiopian calculation of time, we're talking about it in the solar sense, in the solar. When we're speaking about our Hebraic aspect, is the Luna. So the Luna is more related to the mother as the Old Testament. God was like a mother. Now with Christ, our black Lord and Savior, the Father is being revealed. The, the fatherhood of God is being reestablished. But there's a backlash from the demoniacs who, just like they deceive Eve, have deceived latter-day womankind. The majority, not all, but the majority of womankind are also being deceived in this female list of so-called feminism. You, and that's where we have with even the Baphomet. That's where we have the, the whole imagery of, of, of the Baphomet and the symbology where the Baphomet stands behind that white woman and is speaking to her. Or even in some of the Christian iconography of, of the Garden of Eden. Or if we go back to ancient Egypt... You understand? There's a link. Now, that woman connection is important, but the woman aspect or the, 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 the lunar aspect is the mother aspect. So from the Hebrew year, as we already know in our Torah studies and the Torah portions, is 
according to the lunar aspect. In Christ or in the Moshiach, the Moshiach now brings the sun. Here comes the sun, little darling. You know, the sun now is coming, you understand, into the perspective. So this is why in Revelation we see the solar and the lunar being brought together. You understand, the sun and the moon is the restoration of the Godhood or the Godhead as above, so below. But the demoniacs, the demons, or the archones, the archons, some say archons, but really it's the archons who had rulership because of the fall of Adam, ha Adam, because of the fall of the black man. Now when we put it into fullness, the fall of the black man has brought on the rise of the demoniacs who have utilized white supremacy and the Gentiles and the European. You understand that has made the European and the white folks and those who are under white supremacy his people. And this is where we get a replacing of the true Christ, the black Christ, with the Antichrist. Here's where we get the COINTELPRO program, which is to stop the rise of the black Messiah. But you have to understand how Luciferian and Satanistic and evil that is. And if that is true, that the government of America and the um, FBI, CIA, whoever, whoever they may be, whatever kind of alphabetical, acronistic arrangement of names or whatever, if they really have tried to stop the rise of the black Messiah, therefore they recognize that the true Messiah, our black Lord and Savior, is the true one, and their whitewashed Jesus is the fake one. You understand? And if they've tried to do this, then they are cursed. They are damned. So Reverend Jeremiah Wright was actually right when he said, no, 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 not God bless America. God did bless America. But it's clear that America has gone away from its blessing. And with the new so-called normal, um, all these kind of issues that now have changed or have sought to change laws and times. You understand, now we have the, ma the most major example of this is so-called gay or homosexual marriages. This is the latest in this series. And then they wonder, why is America getting so much bad weather? They can't put it together. They refuse to put it together. It's a part of their psychological um, psyops operation is to avoid these things and to ridicule anyone who does, to ignore the facts and to ridicule, you know, saying anyone who does or to label them. So if we talk about the so-called homosexuality is against God and it's abomination. I, you know, the ones will say, oh, you're a homophile, so forth and so on, to ridicule. If you bring out facts, they'll dismiss these facts. Of, because it's a part of a greater psychological, it's, it's what the Bible talks about in the last days with the serpent, with a pepper. A pepper would deceive or pathos, you understand, or the rehab, you understand, would deceive the whole world. If it were possible, even the very elect, because even for a lot of us, if we're not firmly rooted and grounded in the truth, we begin to believe or be like Eve some of the nonsense. Oh, well, you know, well, you know, all this garbage and everything, because we don't want to hold firmly to the truth. You understand? So it says, watch how you stand. Least you fall. So in this particular article, 9-11 plus 10, something interesting was stated. And then we'll connect this with the four Gospels, where it's matched to the four Gospels or pillars. Um, here it says, here it says, and we thought this was interesting, it said, um, the first attack, the first attack. The WTC had been a jihadist target long before the 9-11 attack. On February 26, 1993, a radical group with connections to Al-Qaeda it detonated a well-constructed homemade bomb in the WTC World Trade Center parking garage. The bomb, about 1,500 pounds of urea nitrate explosive in a rented van, was parked next to a structural element in the garage. The plan was to make one tower collapse into the other. This is what was allegedly planned in 1992 to make one tower collapse into the other, thus destroying both. How close did the terrorists come to success? The World Trade Center's architect later testified that if the van had been parked closer to the building's poured 
poured concrete foundation. Where they poured concrete foundation, the tower would have fallen. And this was quoting from a Newsweek September 11th, 2001 article. Isn't that something? A icon destroyed. How could that be 2001, the very day? Uh, anyway, we have to look that up. That's just something interesting. It says this is from a Newsweek an article from Newsweek called An Icon Destroyed. And that was September 11th, 2001. So they have that article then where they're talking about the attack before on that very day. Could it be? Or did this one come out around that time? Anyway, the main point was about the pillars. We said all that basically just to illuminate and highlight how important pillars are. So we have these four pillars. And we're going to get into more on the 9, 11, plus 1. Hopefully before we finish this um, this, this series of updates and videos and revelations concerning presently what's going on. So now Rosh Hashanah is our lunar aspect, the, the, the lunar aspect, and that is September 28th to September 30th. September, so when the moon is coming into, into range, into fullness because of the orbit of the earth, then it's from September, sundown September 28th to sundown September 30th is the Rosh Hashanah or the Ras Hasana, the Ras Hasana from Wednesday to Friday, from Wednesday to Friday coming up. So that's the lunar aspect. So this year, sometimes the lunar precedes the solar. Sometimes the mother, in that sense, precedes the father, or the knowledge of the mother is the first thing that a newborn has. Now, the mother for us as elect Rastafari and as true Christian, as true Christians, the mother is the law. The law is our mother. You understand? She's the one who brings us up. The law is that which brings us to Christ. You know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, many Christians being taught antichrist doctrines as Christian doctrines and not studying the Bible for themselves have been deluded and, and deceived. But then largely it's their own fault because there's many warners who are warning them. They can choose to check it out for themselves or ignore. And many just choose to ignore because... Even the deception, being, being in the deceived state is more comfortable. They derive more pleasure. They can continue in their wicked ways with pleasure, you know, easier that way. So um, no need to feel sad or dismayed or miffed about that. But now in this other book right here, this is called The Recovery Bible. This little thing, we don't know if they still have it on the Internet. It was free, this free, this free um, Recovery Bible, New Testament something that we would suggest to a lot of the brothers and sisters if they can go on the Internet, look up Recovery Bible, go to the website, and actually see if they still are <coughs> giving it away free. The site is www.biblesforamerica.org, and this was written by Witness, the footnotes by Witness Lee. It's, it's, very, it's very, very interesting. It's a very good New Testament um, study. It was compiled roughly around August 1st, 1991. And now why we want to share this with you all is because of um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, understanding these four pillars, understanding this square right here. You understand? And we understand the square, we can understand what they're trying to do with the world, um, the One World Trade Center or the Freedom Tower. The Freedom Tower, its unique shape, the Freedom Tower has a very unique shape that begins off as a square, changes to octagon, and ends up at a square again. So it begins off like this, it changes this way, halfway through it, and then it ends off here. So the whole thing about the squares is very interesting. In other words, working within the square and working off the square. And right now, it's interesting because the building is halfway done. It's halfway completed. So they're at that, that, that halfway mark where it turns from a square into an octagon, an eight-pointed shape, and then when it concludes at the top, it will return to a square. That means there's a Masonic Illuminati so-called meaning to that. That's beginning on the square, you understand, and then going, way, you know, it's beginning like in law, and then beginning off law, you understand, going off law halfway and then returning on law. It, 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 it's, it's the whole black and white of the checkerboard, so forth and so on. Um, so there's something very interesting to that. They have their own meanings 
from their own so-called secret societies and among their own fraternities for doing what they're doing the way they're doing it, even right now with the 9-11, even right now with the so-called um, suspected um, terrorist attack and they're locking down New York. No, that is, that is so that they can control whatever happens or whatever doesn't happen. You understand? And we think that it's going to be very interesting because one thing beginning right now with the Sabbath, being that this is Friday, the Sabbath of, of, of the Shabbat, and many folks are out partying and doing their thing, and they're all caught up in this, in this um, they're caught up in this spirit, in the sense that they're, they're riding this wave, they're being taken away, in a sense, with this flood. A lot of mayhem, whether it's seen, whether it's a, it's a physical event, it's already happened, because this right now is a gate of God. We are at Babel. This is Bob Ale. This is the gate of God. You understand? And it's the gate of God because when we look at this square, we'll recognize that there are four gates. Two of them are solstice gates, and two of them are, are, are equinoctial gates. And what's interesting is that with Rosh Hashanah and Ethiopian New Year not coinciding this year, some years that they coincide, this year we have September 11th, for the terrorist uh, memorial, 9-11 plus 10, and then we have Ethiopian New Year, which has been divinely moved off a day. But that's only if you are in tune and in touch with the divine. If you're not and you think, oh, September 11, Ethiopian New Year, and you're going to celebrate 9-11 memorial along with Ethiopian New Year, you're going to, you know, th there's some mixed fruit right there, you know, and, and we, wouldn't, we wouldn't go to market on that. But then also is the dates for September 28th to 30th, because you have to remember that not only do we as Kedusan observe these times, but also those who are into so-called so -called black magic, really they should call it white magic. You see, black magic actually should be that which is of the, our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And white magic, you understand, should really be of what they do in their devilish, their, their Harry Potterism and their occultic thing. So there's a lot of occultism that's associated with this present time right now. But for us, it's important to understand these gates properly. They are basically trying to take control of these gates. You understand? If not take control, then stir people away from the real significance of this time. And even the very elect, because there are many Ethiopians at home and abroad whether Ethiopian, Ethiopian, or black people here in America, in the Caribbean, and, and South and Central Latin America who are Ethiopian or Ethiopic peoples who are being distracted by this whole September 11th, 2011, or 9-11 plus 10, you understand, who are being distracted. And therefore, they're not understanding what is the relevance of the four Gospels, which are pillars. So they're trying to remove the pillars. This is where the psalm speaks about what can the righteous do if the foundations be destroyed? In other words, what can the righteous do if the foundations have been, the pillars have been destroyed? And this is what they've sought to do. Take one's attention from that which is true and real, but mainly, because you see they already have many of their own people. They're trying to get the elect now. And sometimes I wonder how many Ethiopians, so-called Ethiopians, are caught up in this 9-11 thing. And, and they are more willing to observe 9-11 after the way of the Gentiles. They want to learn what, what, the way, what, the, what do the Gentiles want to do? What are their ways? They want to learn the ways of the Gentiles so they can be just like them. I, I really wonder how many of the very elect are being deceived by this present time. I'm sure many of them. In fact, many of them are focusing more in, uh, uh, on the Ethiopian New Year from a Gentile misunderstanding from, than from their own Ethiopic roots. So what can the righteous do if, if the foundations, you see, if the foundations be destroyed? But this book here, see if you can get it, it's called The Recovery Bible. It, it was free. It, it, it was free. Um, from Biblesforamerica.org. 
we're not too sure if it's still free out there, if it's still available. But what was significant about this particular um, Bible was its footnotes. Its footnotes are very, very interesting because they recognize some of the same things that we recognize through years of study and diligence in, in the footnotes. It has some profuse and very interesting footnotes. So it's a good study companion. It's a good study companion, and it's called the Recovery Version of the Recovery Bible. And um, check out BiblesForAmerica.org, and perhaps you can get it, get it from there. So stay tuned for a moment. We're going to clear this and, and, and come in with the, the pillars, the pillars for all men on the earth. 